it wasn't that long ago that the average traveler's idea of flying on a wide-body plane was restricted to overseas traveling. True, some domestic though high-capacity routes sometimes deploy A330s or 777s, but two-aisle planes are primarily a fixture of long-haul services. Subscribe to Globetrotting for a lot more analysis. We'd really appreciate your support as we try to continue to grow the channel. More recently though, the pandemic shuttered demand throughout the industry, which made the Californian Desert and other aircraft boneyards the place of record for wide bodies, especially super jumbos like the 747 and A380. But more recently, airlines have started pulling their wide bodies out of dry storage. Why is this? The pandemic, the reason why they were there in the first place, has caused a considerable inverse swing in the demand side of aviation. The funny thing is, you tell people they shouldn't travel and obviously stay home for a bit. So you've got to be prepared for the torrent of people once released that are ready to move again. Of course, people want to be free, and what's more freeing than jumping on board a plane and having an entire route network at your disposal to go wherever you want in the world. There's been close to 8,000 wide-body Boeing and Airbus aircraft built. Now, by comparison, the Boeing 737, the most popular narrow-body aircraft of all time as a series, has more than 15,000 total orders. That makes sense. The 737 family has exceptional mission flexibility and can be used at more airports than wide bodies. After all, you're not going to find a 777 landing at an incredibly small airport. Thanks to the cost of the 737 series, it's worked its way up over recent history to be a staple for so many airlines, established ones and also ones starting out, thanks to its reliability and overall mission statement as an aircraft that intertwines with so many companies. What about pilots? Well, generally speaking, each aircraft is a two-pilot operation, but many regulators and airlines require relief pilots in wide bodies, especially on flights over eight hours. Facing a global pilot shortage, with an acute pain in some regions of the world, can airlines think outside the box and help alleviate the congestion of pent-up travel demand? Their answer is yes, of course they can, but it may look different and seem unorthodox in different areas, and of course there are many issues with said ideas. After all, many airlines did survive and in some cases financially came out ahead during the pandemic. For aviation fanatics, an exciting way that this could be done is by using wide bodies more often. Imagine this, it's a Monday morning and a business traveller is set off to a convention in Las Vegas. This traveller will typically have 10 plus flight options to their B-class airport. As a consumer, that is definitely wonderful, but as an airline, it requires something they are short on, pilots. Labour and fuel are also undoubtedly the largest cost centres for airlines. Yes, wide bodies burn more fuel than their narrow body counterparts, but they also use the same number of pilots while carrying more passengers per flight. The equation is simple. Do more people per flight and fewer flight options save money and is it actually beneficial for the airline? It's an interesting question with many ins and outs. An American Airlines 737-800 in standard configuration holds 160 passengers. A 777-200 of the same livery carries 273. In our Class B airspace to Las Vegas scenario, 10 daily narrowbody flights will deliver 1,600 passengers but require 20 pilots thereabouts. Meanwhile, six 777 flights would carry more people and use eight fewer pilots. Using 747s and A380s in the same scenario, well, then we could see four daily flights delivering more people and using 12 fewer pilots. The reality is, in any case, there are many problems with flying Boeing 747s and A380s on these flights to Class B airports, if you will. Firstly, space and gates. But of course, wide bodies will typically burn about twice as much fuel. So for these airlines, do the savings they could see from not having as many pilots really outweigh the fuel costs? On top of that, it takes longer to board these huge aircraft, and especially if we're talking a inter-America flight that is very short, is it really worth all the time, energy, and cost? If all things are equal, the answer is likely no for most airlines. That said, the reality is that the world is short on pilots. It's a very real problem and something we need to be made aware of. Therefore, eating the fuel cost might just be the way of doing business if airlines want to keep customers happy and headed to their destinations. Demand for wide bodies has returned following a slump, and their place in the industry definitely remains present, but always will, even after a few years of doubts. 
but in terms of fixing the pilot shortage, while in theory this idea could work, breaking it down more thoroughly, the results aren't exactly what you'd call a breakthrough that would be enough to say change the business model of many. Ultimately, their operations are good and can suffice, but naturally with a pilot shortage and staff shortages, networks have definitely been up in arms during busy periods. And while the situation is improving, no doubt for some airlines this winter season will of course have its chaos. From things that are completely out of the airline's control to of course just regular operational difficulties from pilot shortages and much more. What are your thoughts on the whole wide body and pilot shortage idea? Let us know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.